Hello everyone, today we are talking about ND filters. Instead of only talking about how to use ND filters to get more cinematic video, I also want to talk about creative techniques like time lapses, hyperlapses, and light painting where you can use an ND filter. For this video, I'm going to be using my DJI Pocket 2 with some Freewell ND filters, but these techniques work with whatever camera you have, whether it's your smartphone, DSLR, or mirrorless camera. You're going to see this video is going to be a fun one. For those of you who are new to this channel, I'm Luke Ben Mahalford, a young photographer and filmmaker on the journey to become better at this art. After making my last video where I compared the DJI Pocket 2 with the Google Pixel 4e, Fruel reached out and offered me some of the filters for the DJI Pocket 2. I accepted to make this review because I bought their ND filters for my Canon DSLR last summer and loved them. I also considered buying some of the filters for my DJI Osmo Pocket multiple times. I am not paid to make this video and Freewell won't see the video or cannot comment before you do. With this out of the way, let's get started. I will start by talking about how to get more cinematic video by using ND filter and then I'm going to move on on using the ND filters to capture time lapses and hyperlapses and finally I'm going to move on to the coolest example where we're going to use ND filters to get some light trail and do some light painting. If you want to skip through the video you can use the chapters down below. When reviewing the DJI Pocket 2, I mentioned that the one thing that was missing from the Creator Combo Kit was some good ND filters. If you don't know what are ND filters or why they are useful, I didn't know either for the longest time. The easiest way to describe ND filters is as being sunglasses but for your camera. Now you might be wondering why we would want to have sunglasses on a camera because usually you want to have the most light possible instead of the sensor and there's one good reason which is motion blur. Now if you don't know what is motion blur, there's one pretty easy way to discover it. So if you take your hand in front of you here and you start moving it super fast, you're going to see that your hand is totally blurry when moving it. And this is what we call motion blur. The problem with most digital cameras is that if you are taking a picture with the auto mode, the shutter speed needs to be super high to compensate the fact that you don't have any ND filters on. So if we come here, we're going to have to go up to a 1 over 6400 to get an exposure that seems to be about right. And now if I do the same test here and move it really fast, you're going to see that the hand is completely jittery and it doesn't look natural at all. And that's because there's no motion blur. Every single image is perfectly sharp inside of the video. Now I still haven't talked about how to get motion blur using a camera. For this, you want to respect the rule, which is double your frame rate. It's actually a bit more complex than that, so I'm going to link a video from Gerald Undone where it goes into more detail about this rule. If you don't know what is a frame rate, frame rate is the number of images you that you have in every single second of a video. So for example, if you're using your smartphone, it usually takes 30 frames per second, which means you get 30 images for every single second of video. If you're filming a film, you're probably using 24 frames per second or like I'm doing right now because it's a little bit more cinematic. For these settings on your camera, uh, the DJI Pocket 2, you first have to go inside of the Pro Mode. So you need to come on the screen here and make sure you select the Pro Mode um, to be on because you want to have access to the manual controls for the image. Then if you go inside of the exposure here, you want to select 1 over 150. And that's because we want to double our frame rate. So the real one we want to have is one over 48, but we don't have that option. So we select the one that is closest possible. If you were taking slow motion, because it's 120 frames per second for most slow motion, you would select one over 240 for your sh uh, shutter speed. If we look at the image from the DJI Pocket 2, we can see that right now I'm completely overblown and it's looking totally terrible. And also if we look at the light meter on the little screen here, we can actually see that it's over three stops of overexposure. So it's really overblown the image right now. And this is where the ND filters that Freewell sent me come in handy. So they sent me a pack of four filters that range from ND8 to ND64. And ND8 means you're blocking one eighth of the light that is coming in. And it's the same idea for the other ones. And one eighth of the light is equivalent to three stops. So ND8 is three 
stops, ND16 is four stops, ND32 is five stops, and ND64 is a full six stops of light that we're blocking. So for this one here, I'm actually gonna use the ND64 because I know we're blocking a lot of light. And if we put it on, we can instantly see that the image is looking a lot better. It's a little bit foggy right now, so I'm just gonna wipe it up and we're gonna see the image is gonna look much better. Now, if we adjust our ISO on the camera here, so I'm gonna bring it down to 200 and I start recording, we're gonna see that now we have perfect motion blur inside of my hand when I'm moving it. Another pretty neat feature of the DJI Pocket 2 is that you have auto max ISO. So if you come in exposure here, you can select to have a max ISO. And that's great because the camera is not very good over 1600, especially when it's a little bit darker. So you can select something that is maximum here. And now if we select this, we can look at the metering on the screen here. So if it's at zero, it's at a perfect exposure right now. And if it goes up or under, that's a sign that you should change your ND filter. So this is the way to know that yeah, you should change your ND filter is by looking at the metering on the screen to know if you need to put something that's darker or lighter, depending on what is showing. You might not know it, but it's very common to use ND filters when taking time lapses and hyperlapses. The reason for this is that when you're creating video with motion blur, you want to replicate what the eye sees, and the principle is the same when doing time lapses and hyperlapses. Because everything is moving so fast, you want to have more blur inside of the shot to tell your head that it's actually everything is actually really moving fast. But if you have frames that are all very sharp, your head is going to think that something is wrong because if everything is moving fast, everything should be blurry for our head. Let's start by talking about hyperlapses. For this to work the best, you want to be inside of something that's moving pretty fast. So for example, from a car. Here's an example I took the other day when going to skiing. If we pause the video, we're going to see that the trees and also the cars passing by are all blurry. And this creates motion blur inside of the shot like we talked before, which just makes everything look better. One thing you want to know is that you want to go as low as possible on the shutter speed on the DJI Pocket 2, but there's a limitation on the DJI Pocket 2 where your minimum shutter speed for hyperlapse needs to be 1 over 25. But if we go down to that point, we're still going to need to be using an ND filter because there's too much light coming in. Oh, one thing that I need to tell you before I forget, this also works better if you have things that are passing by around you, so either cars coming towards you, or if you're uh, somewhere where you have like trees or something like that around to show that you're moving around. For example, if I was taking a hyperlapse here, it wouldn't be the best one because you wouldn't really see any motion around me when I'm moving around. This is pretty unrelated, but DJI added to the DJI Mimo app an option to stabilize the footage from the hyperlapses afterwards. So this is definitely something worth checking out if you have the DJI Pocket 2 because it makes the footage a lot more smoother. Now let's move on to time lapses. The technique is pretty similar, but there's one big limitation with the DJI Pocket 2. The problem is that I like taking exposure times of half a second to get some nice blur when things are moving around. But I realized that if we go under 1 20th of a second on the DJI Pocket 2, you cannot have an interval that is less than 2 seconds. That means that if I have an exposure time of half a second, I have one second and a half where the DJI Pocket 2 is not taking anything during that time. And that means the video that outputs is a little bit choppier because you're missing some frames where you're just not getting anything. This is not always a problem, so for example, if we're taking the sky right now here behind me, the sunset, or something like that, it wouldn't be a problem, because even if you're missing some frames, it won't show up. But when I was at Tremblant, filming people from the ski station, that was definitely a problem, because you see that sometimes you're missing some frames between people moving around and things like that. Knowing these two techniques should allow you to get a lot more creative shots. For example, here is an example of long exposure of waterfalls, which was pretty cool that I took a few months ago. If you've watched the video until now and still haven't subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Go hit that big red subscribe button. Light painting uses a technique that is very well known in photography, long exposures. Usually in photography, we use ND filters to create long exposures, which are used to create super smooth water instead of waterfalls or lake or things like that, or to create light trails at night from cars passing by or techniques like that. We're going to be using this technique, but to paint something in a 3D space, which is very creative because you can really create whatever you want. So for example, a few days ago with my sister, we decided to paint 2021 inside of the 3D space. 
The challenge that night wasn't capturing the four different shots and merging them together, it was actually getting the shots in the first place. It needed to be clear enough for my sister to be able to skate without it being dangerous, but dark enough for me to capture the light trails and nothing else in the shot. This is where having ND filters became really handy because it was still clear enough to be safe for her and dark enough for me to capture what I wanted with the camera. Now let's capture the shot so you can know how we can actually do it. So for this I'm going to first open the camera and go inside of photo mode so this is pretty obvious because we're taking a picture and then I want to come inside of the menu here and make sure that I'm on the 16 megapixel picture not the 64 because I don't want to be taking four pictures to get the shot. So here we're just going to go after that inside of our manual settings so again you need to be inside of pro mode for this to work and we're going to go on exposure and make sure that we have our maximum exposure uh, possible which is 8 seconds on the DJI Pocket 2. Then we're going to go on the ISO and bring it down to around something like 200 because it's so dark if it's too high we're going to have terrible noise inside of it. Now I have applied this and take a test shot I already did a little bit earlier. You're going to see that we have one problem inside of that test shot and it's that there's too much light inside of the scene. Because of the Christmas lights that I have behind here they're actually creating light on the bottom here uh, of the snow and reflecting all around and this means that we have too much light for the light uh, trail to actually work. So we want something darker in this case so this is where our ND filters come handy again. So I'm going to put on a ND filter and then do a first test shot. One pretty fair, important thing I forgot to mention is actually the light that I'm going to be using and for this I'm going to be using the Aperture MC light and this is going to allow me to change to whatever color I want by only turning this dial here but you really don't need to use a light like this one you could use your cell phone and change the color on your screen of your phone to get the exact same result so just use whatever you have as a light source for this another important thing I forgot to say is that your camera needs to be on a tripod for this or at least a stable surface because it needs to be, stay perfectly stable during the full eight seconds that we're going to be taking the shot. Pretty cool, right? So I forgot to clarify a few things before shooting the shots. So the first one is that when I was taking the pictures, I didn't have my video light on. I only turned it on to show you when I was moving around what it looked like. Uh, but that's super important because you need to be 100% dark for the effect to work because if there's other things, other lights around, you might start seeing objects you don't want to see. Talking of objects that disappeared, you might be wondering why I disappeared in the shots and that's because I'm pretty much all in black with what I'm wearing right now and that means that I don't reflect too much light so if I'm moving pretty fast nothing is reflecting on me or I'm not creating light so in the end I just disappear inside of the shot and that's why you can create these very cool effects by just moving around in the dark you're just going to disappear in the shot. In some of the most more complex scenes, so for example, for the one with Happy New Year, I actually had to take multiple pictures and stitch them together inside of Photoshop. So if you're interested to learn how I did that, please let me know in the comments below and I might make a video to teach you how you can do it by yourself because you can do so much more once you start combining multiple shots together. As you might have realized, I really just scratched the surface of what is possible. There's so much more you can do. So I did simple shapes of so circles, up and down, uh, left to right. But there's so much more you can do and the only limit is really your creativity in this case. I want this video by giving my thoughts of the Freewell ND filters. Just like the ones I bought from my Canon 6D Mark II, I really like these filters. They're super high quality. If we compare them with the ones from Polar Pro or no filters at all, we can see that there doesn't seem to be any problems with the image. When reviewing ND filters, you want to look for two things. The first one is color cast, so you don't want the color to be changing because you have a filter in front of it. And you need to check if there's vignetting inside of the corners, but it doesn't seem to be the case with my test from these filters. They also come with a polarizing filter 
built in. I didn't test it inside of this video because I think it's going to be for another video. But they basically allow to get more green and blue out of the shot, which is great when you're inside of nature and you really want to get these colors out because that's what your eyes see pretty well. And it also allows to cut reflections. So this is great if you're trying to take a video through a window and it's sunny or if you're trying to take pictures of let's see something that's pretty shiny like a car you can use a polarizing filter to cut out these reflections and get um, less reflection inside of the shot which is pretty great they also come with a hard case which is pretty good because if you put them in the bag or put them in your pocket you're straight that not going to get scratched what is a little bit weird is that the case is really big for only four filters inside of it. So I wish they would make it a little bit smaller one so you can stick it a little bit easier inside of your pockets. One thing that I don't like as much is that when you put them on the DJI Pocket 2, the DJI Pocket 2 doesn't seem to recognize all the time that these are ND filters that are on. And that means that when the camera tries to close, it starts hitting the lens on uh, the side, which always is a little bit always scary to know if it's gonna break or not the, the, the filters here. So this one thing to keep in mind, but I hope that DJI can fix the camera uh, with a firmware update to fix this problem. Another thing that is not as great is that these are so small that when trying to take them out here uh, with the magnets, you usually end up touching them with your hands and this puts uh, oils on the lens. And that means that you're getting oil on them. And for example, right now when I'm outside in the cold, the oil freezes and creates uh, fog inside of the picture. So that's another little thing that's a little bit annoying uh, with such small filters. But that's not the fault of Freewell. That's because the DJI Pocket 2 is so small and has such a small filter. Overall, I highly recommend these filters. I really enjoyed using them. I'm going to put the link in the description down below if you're interested in buying some for your DJI Pocket 2. Before the light completely disappears behind me here, let's wrap up this video. I hope this video inspired you to go outside with some ND filters and get some more creative shots. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like below to let me know. The next one is going to be a pretty interesting one where I'm going to take pictures and videos using the DJI Pocket 2 and a light pollution filter from Freewell. So be sure to subscribe below if you want to learn about that. See you in the next one. Bye bye.